Um, notice the two layers that this guy had. Why do you think he did that? It was too thin, so he added more. From the star. So, so we have to watch this case like this. When you put, when you're pouring something, my criteria is whatever the lowest point in that impression or the highest point, which would translate to the lowest point on your cast, I need about a half inch from that down to the base. Anything less can make this thing fracture if I try to separate it. Um, so there's, there's a certain criteria we want. This is the lowest point for maxillary, obviously, okay, the palate. If I reach in there, it's not a half inch. So you would automatically say, okay, this is the impression I want it to be. What's the lowest point here? Pretty much the same, isn't it? So sometimes you're going to have a palette that's real sharp, like a V. So you would start measuring from that down for your thickness on your base. Sometimes it's the vestibule or the flange that sticks down lower. Start measuring half an inch from that. Okay, so it's not a standard rule. I just want the thinnest amount to be one half inch. So that's one thing I look for. How about this? What would be the lowest when I pour this? It's pretty much the same, but sometimes watch it. Sometimes you're, yeah, what do, what do you see? Yeah, sometimes it's, it goes like this. Simply by the nature of things. You know, it's lower back there on the lingual side. So watch, look at your impression and say, okay, I gotta make sure from here to there it's half an inch. Not from here, not from here, anything like that. So whether it's maxillary or mandibular, look at your highest point on your impression. From there you should have one half inch. Okay? And we pour. The one area that you wanna see, let's say you have an edentulous case. And you go ahead and pour this, and you use this, let's say you're using it. You see how it catches? Sometimes you can't really go in there too low, or this could be too big, that it sinks down at the same time. But what happens is because your stone can only reach so much, what happens to the edges here? It becomes very thin. It becomes very uh, shallow in the back of that. It's unsupported. You can see the sharpness here. What I normally want to do when the impression is done is I want to see an extended one fourth inch stone distal to retromolar pads, hamular notches. Okay. So right there is what happens. See how thin it is. And if this was a partial case and they process this in the lab, processing involves a lot of stresses on, on um, dentures that can make them fracture. They're exposed to heat, extreme pressure, and they squeeze all that acrylic. Um, cold, and, cold and hot temperature can fracture the stone. And just handling it. You know, anything that's thin can actually fracture and get into your acrylic. And then that's extra work for the lab to clean up. If they don't catch it, then you have to clean it up. It becomes part of your acrylic. So anything that you can do to keep that from happening is what you want to do. Um, I use this, okay? But only because I know what I'm looking for. I hate for someone to use it and find out that it's not enough. You're taking your alginate, alginate is only good for one quarter, and you have to do it again.